Arturo DeManto. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dumbest decisions ever made in paranormal movies. Something they used to call Candyman. Don't. Don't say that. For this list, we'll be looking at horror movies where paranormal entities would have been quickly thwarted had it not been for very stupid character decisions. If you haven't yet seen these movies, consider this your spoiler alert. Which of these decisions made you roll your eyes? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Staying One More Night – Poltergeist in this classic Spielberg horror film, the Freeling family experience paranormal activity in their house after youngest daughter, Carol Ann, is found talking to TV static in the middle of the night. They're here. Carol Ann later gets kidnapped by a ghost called the Beast, and her mother Diane has to rescue her. While the family wisely decides to move out, they spend one more night in the house. So we're leaving tonight for sure. Yeah, we are. I tell you what, if the kids get sleepy, just let them conk out till I get home. Diane winds up home alone with Robbie and Carol Ann, giving the Beast another opportunity to kidnap the kids. Just get out of there already! <laughs> Number 9. Taunting the Demon – Paranormal Activity <laughs> After moving into their new home, Katie and Mika start experiencing anomalies. Katie admits that she sensed an evil presence in her room as a child and believes it might have followed her to their new home. But Mika does not take her seriously. You promised me you weren't going to mess with that stuff. No, I promised you I wasn't going to buy a Ouija board. Oh. His not so brilliant plan is to set up cameras, a Ouija board, and threaten the ghost. Even after Katie asks him to stop, Mika continues to taunt the demon and make a joke of it all. What is your quest? What is your favorite color? It's not surprising that the demon eventually gets its revenge by possessing Katie, killing Mika, and throwing him across the room at his camera. That's what you get for messing with a demon. Number 8. Saying Candyman five times. Candyman. And if you look in the mirror, and you say his name five times. He'll appear behind you, breathing down your neck. You want to try it? Based on a short story by Clive Barker, Candyman follows a student researching the local legend of a hook-handed killer who appears when you say his name five times in front of a mirror. Though the warning that's part and parcel of the legend seems to be so clear it's foolproof, people still say Candyman five times in a mirror and get murdered. She looked in the mirror, and I don't know why, but she said his name the last time. Candyman. She turned out the lights. No matter how skeptical you may be, it's safe to say that the best way to never have to find out if this legend is true or not is to, well, just not say his name five times in front of a mirror. It's too obvious. Candyman, 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 Candyman. Number seven, crawling into the pipe. Jeepers Creepers. We look in the pipe. That's it. Is this your idea of a little adventure or something? Because this is why girls are smarter, okay? This 2001 supernatural horror film tells the story of The Creeper, an ancient demon who reappears every 23rd spring for 23 days. The brother and sister duo in this film, Darry and Trish, would never have encountered The Creeper had Darry not done something very stupid. Hey, you know the part in scary movies where somebody does something really stupid and everybody hates them for it? This is it. When Darry glimpses someone dumping bodies into a pipe, he should have just contacted the cops and gotten the hell out of there. Instead, Darry decides to crawl down the pipe and see what's down there. Guess what they find? Yep, bodies. I found our body. You what? I found our body. Ah, Jesus! This works out well for the creeper, since he can smell fear. Thanks a lot, Darry. Number 6. Reading from the Nartorum de Monto – Evil Dead 
the horrific events of 2013's soft reboot of Evil Dead would have never happened without high school teacher Eric's dumb decision. And what about the voodoo shit they did down there? Huh? No, 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 no. Voodoo is more about dolls, personal artifacts. This Eric, is something different. That's enough. You shouldn't have touched anything from that basement. In the cellar of a cabin, Eric finds a book, the Natorum de Monto. It's wrapped in barbed wire, which should be a sign, but Eric takes the time to cut it open with pliers. He then discovers the book's jacket made of human skin and plenty of do not read warnings written in human blood. Ignoring them, he reads an incantation from the book. Montose. That dumb decision opens a portal door, allowing an evil demonic entity to cross over, possess and kill members of the group. Way to go, Eric. Way to go. I read a passage from that book. It, it was some sort of prayer. I released something, David. I released something evil. Number five, not going back to the colony. The witch. Then shall you be banished from this plantation's liberties. I would be glad on it. Then take your leave. In this 17th century tale, a family leaves their Puritan colony over religious differences. They settle near a forest, but a dark presence lurking within takes notice, kidnapping their baby and later eldest son Caleb. One of their crucial mistakes is blaming their innocent daughter, Thomasin. But even dumber is their decision to just not go back to the colony to take refuge, or at least ask for help. Their children are going missing, and clearly there are evil forces at work. I'll set off at first light. I'll not return till i found it. It would be better to go to the village to raise up help. I cannot... It's a day's ride, and I have no horse. There's no time to be lost. Thomason's father, William, even suggests going to the village to give Thomason away. But nothing about asking for help to find his missing baby. We must catch our food if we cannot grow it. We will conquer this wilderness. It will not consume us. Number four, kicking the map into the creek. The Blair Witch Project. Can we keep going, please? <laughs> no, we're going to chill out. <laughs> I thought you wanted to get to the car. Oh, boy! It was a decision that frustrated viewers as much as Mike's companions. The found footage horror follows three students who venture out into the forest to make a film about the myth of a Blair Witch. Heather, Mike and Josh later find themselves lost, and eventually all three fall prey to the sinister forces, leaving only their footage behind. <coughs> all they had to do was go back to the car and leave when things started getting scary. But they couldn't do that because of Mike. After a long frustrating day, Mike impulsively kicks their only map into the river. They might have been able to get back home safely had Mike not gotten rid of the map. Good job, Mike. I'm sorry about the map. Man. Okay. What can I say? Sorry. <laughs> Please just don't shit. say sorry. Number three, resurrecting a child. Pet Cemetery. I know what you're thinking you're doing, Lewis, but she won't come back the same. Never mess with forces you don't understand. When the family cat dies, Dr. Lewis Creed buries him at a strange grave site near their new house. Miraculously, the cat comes back to life. But he's changed, feral and violent. At work, one of Lewis's patients warns him that the barrier was not meant to be broken. You'd think Lewis would have gotten the message. Yet when his daughter dies in a tragic accident, he decides to resurrect her using the same message. The results? Well, basically the same as the cat. We know he was grieving, but this was pretty predictable. Number two, watching the tape. 
The Ring. Have you heard about this videotape that kills you when you watch it? Just as Eric in Evil Dead did not understand the do not read out loud, people in The Ring seem to not understand do not watch the tape. Seven days. <laughs> The urban legend around the tape clearly explains that people who watch it get a phone call saying that they'll die in seven days. Can you guess what people do? They watch the tape. No! None of the terrifying events in the Ring franchise would have happened had people decided to just not watch it. Even better, just destroy it. Instead, journalist Rachel Keller even has her ex-boyfriend watch it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Switching Babies – The Omen in Richard Donner's classic horror film, Robert and Catherine are expecting a baby. The child dies at birth, and rather than tell his wife, Robert secretly adopts another child and ends up taking home the Antichrist. Your wife need never know. It would be a blessing to her. Admittedly, this consequence is more extreme than anyone could have foreseen, but lying to your wife about her baby and having her raise someone else's child without her knowing doesn't exactly display sound decision making. Soon enough, the child, whom they name Damien, demonstrates a predilection for evil, and ultimately both Catherine and Robert wind up dead. <laughs> This could have been avoided if Robert had decided not to pull the old switcheroo. God, help me! Please! Stop! Stop or I'll fire! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.